50th birthday. And uh, lots of people earlier this week were wearing costumes just like this, which are also celebrating its 450th birthday. They were also out in force to see the Princess Royal. She planted a tree to mark the anniversary of Boston being given its royal charter. And of course, the townsfolk did turn out in force to greet her. And the celebrations, the celebrations have gone on all week, climaxing in today's pageant. Now here to tell me what it is all about is Jim Bonner Esquire, who is the community archaeologist. So, Jim, what sort of history, Tudor history, like this, does Boston have? That's an enormous amount of Tudor history. Um, basically, the town owes the way it's run today to the events that took place here in 1545, which was when it was granted a charter by King Henry VIII. Does, can you see much of it today? Is there much Tudor Boston left? There still is an awful lot around. If you look at buildings like Shotrise Hall, um, Blackfriars Arts Centre, all the obvious buildings. Um, but if you just take a walk around the town, you turn corners and you might see a little bit of wooden arch, which is a bit of an old medieval building. There's all sorts of things to, to, to discover. Is it, is it a sort of, a, it's Pilgrim Fathers is Boston, isn't it, to, to, to most people around the world? That's right. So is the Tudor period really sort of ignored? Is it going to second place? Well, it certainly hasn't been ignored this weekend. Or this no, weekend. no, no, obviously not. No, you've made a, you've made a real fine show. Yeah. Um, to a certain extent, I think we've, we worked very hard recently to, to really raise the profile of, of Boston's earlier history. Because as you say, the Pilgrim Fathers do occupy a lot of these history books. Right. And uh, Dancing Bears, will these become, do you think, a permanent feature of Boston's street scene? Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah. I think we'll have a few around on market days. Yeah, why not? Good. Uh, that, that's a very, a very tame, a very tame bear, aren't you, Mr. Bear? Yes, he's very tame, isn't he? Oh, yes. The exit's that way, by the way. The bear runs them up, the exit's that way. Jim, thank you very much indeed. Okay. I'm going to return now to Ye Olde Stripsy because one of the highlights of this week's celebrations has been a costume banquet. Staff and students at Boston College have been working overtime to prepare a feast that really is fit for a king. A feast that would have been enjoyed by the people of Boston, the rich ones, that is, a good 450 years ago. If you want to dine out in a certain style in Boston these days, you can leave the diet books at home, forget about table manners and knives and forks. In fact, if you really want to enjoy the atmosphere at the town's most exclusive restaurant, it's best to forget about the 20th century altogether. You can swap it for Wenshire's Mead and Madrigals, plus a menu fit for a king at Boston College's Tudor Banquet. We've tried to raise the food to the level of the royal sort of banquet and uh, all the customers are going to come, hopefully, dressed in suitable costume right. to reflect the occasion. Amen. Amen. Now, Boston does in fact have a, a long history of throwing uh, pageants to celebrate special events and luckily for us and for you as it happens today, many of them have been captured on film and we've been trawling the archives to bring you this.
good. Now, scenes like that and many more of them are being issued later this year on a video called Boston Now and Then. A must, even if you're not a Bostonian. I've got Eric the Rat, Eric the Rat Catcher here. With Eric, Eric, come here. This is going to throw the camera and the sound recorders. But now, how important would you have been? Oh, in... most important, most important person. Right, in Tudor times, in you Tudor were. In Tudor times, yeah. Oh, every town would have a rat. Every town would have a rat. And uh, every town would have many rats. Yeah. Oh, but they'd always have a rat catcher. Yeah. So you were the sort of what? I mean, you were well. We were well paid. We were sort out to buy the nobility. Oh, about really focus, want... focus a day. Focus a day. Focus. Uh, focus a day. They still say it like that, don't yeah. they? Focus. Yeah. Focus a day. Focus a day. And, and are these real rats? These are real rats. Fine. I was afraid we were going to say that, Eric. Thank you very much indeed for the moment. If you just thank like you to uh, thank take you. your pets away. <laughs> Um, that's the last time I venture from the oldest strip. Now, Boston is, well, to me and to a lot of people, I think, a bit of a quiet place. The sort of music you'd, you'd normally expect is the, the madrigal variety. Madrigal, madrigal, bit of quiet music, bit of quiet music. Oh, there you are. The power of television. Now, that's the sort of music you would expect, I think, in Boston, isn't it? Nice and quiet and genteel, because it's that sort of town. But in fact, for some years now, the town has been adopted by members of uh, one of the, well, I suppose loudest is a bit of an insult to them, but uh, one of the loudest rock bands around. I know them, and they won't, uh, they, they won't take action against them. They're called Saxon. Now, they used to be based in Barnsley, but they moved to, uh, to Boston, and uh, Helen Wright caught up with the lead singer as he got ready for his British tour. Boston has a long and distinguished musical history. The composer John Taverner was organist here in the 16th century. These days, though, it's a different music that shakes the stump. This is Biff Byford, singer with Saxon. He came here for a bit of peace and quiet. use this recording studio in an old farm outside the town. We write a lot of our albums here and do a lot of our pre-production here. So, again, uh, nobody bothers us here, you know. The record company don't come here. <laughs> so we don't get hassled. You know. I bought a house on the river here. And, uh, yeah, I, I quite like Boston. Um, you know, it's quite a quiet town, which is what, what you need when you're sort of a heavy metal, you know, perform, because you need somewhere quiet to sort of relax a bit. Um, I mean, it's a nice town, Boston. Uh, I think Lincolnshire in general has sort of been cut off for a long time. And it's only just now sort of uh, catching up. Saxon have just started their first British tour for three years, though they've been busy in Europe and America. We played 22,000 people in San Antonio, in Texas, and then <coughs> we came back to Peterborough and played in front of about 1,400. So it's a bit, it's a bit strange, but we, we love playing England, I mean like playing home sound, so, you know, it's, uh, it's good. We should, I mean, every English band should tour England. I mean, we, we won't stop touring England, even though financially it probably doesn't make sense anymore. And this week they're playing Barnsley and Bradford. That report anyway that's all from us here in uh, sunny boston saxon the uh, the loudest and most talented rock band around and we're going to leave you with some gentle music bye bye from boston <laughs>